What up, though? Welcome to the Free Game Producer Podcast. My name is Brian Andre. I am sitting here in the luxurious bandwidth studios in Atlanta, Georgia. You know what I'm saying? Across from me, I got the super producer, the multi platinum producer, yeah. the five time number one yeah. billboard chart producer, Will Power in the building. What up, what up? boy? What it do? What it do? What it do? What's popping, man? Man, I'm blessed to be here, man. Yes, sir. I can't get that. Song out of my head, Gelato. Gelato, Josh Waters, man. man. Yes, Sweet sir, like man. Gelato. We just dropped head. it. Yeah, uh, so, uh, Friday we dropped Gelato. Uh huh. It's going crazy right now, man. We uh, it's a really, uh, really dope song. It's a catchy Super song, man. catchy man. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. working a, a dope, real dope TikTok campaign. Mm-hmm. You know, just trying to get some shit popping, man. With it, it's, it's, I'm excited, man. Dope, man. Dope, man. So that's going up, man. If you uh out there, man, love R&B, check out Josh Waters' Gelato. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We sitting here. Got the vibes going, man, in yeah. the studio. We got this, this dope candle. from got this uh, candle smelling e- good. 1122. You feel me? You know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? Check them out. Super dope. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, got uh, Tessa behind the boards doing her thing. You got feel me? <laughs> yeah. Still, still loving my fly <laughs> headphones. <laughs> <laughs> right. But look, look, it's really dope that we can do all these shameless plugs today. Yeah. I love it, man. So, Doodoo snack running around here somewhere. You know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> Yo. So what's going on? You had a writing camp this past weekend. Yeah, man. Crazy week. Uh, you know, it's always something exciting going on over here, man. But mm-hmm. we did a um a writing camp and it was really incredible, man. Um had about maybe thirty writers come out. Woo. You know, we got three rooms in here, man, and I can imagine um, the heat that came from that. Yeah, three. We, we had three rooms running, but we also set up like four other stations. So okay. we had writers everywhere in the building writing. Nice, and, nice. And, uh, just a really dope chance to like um, discover new writers. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Build with people who are already established. I had my guy uh, Anthem pulled up on us. Uh, we uh, Super Mario was supposed to pull up, but he had something else come up. But uh, we just had a really dope. Just a real dope setting, man. Yeah. And, and we killed it, man. Came up with shoot. We got like twenty something songs out of that joint. Hey man, you never know what to this day I'm still hearing songs from past writing camps. Yeah. Get placed, you know what I'm saying? So Yeah, bro. Be be, be sure to uh, watch for the next one. Yeah, man. That come. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm excited, bro. It's, it's a good look. Yeah, band with man. So uh yeah, man, not a lot, whole lot of music came up. I know Post Malone dropped his album. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So got a long name, uh Twelve Carat Toothache. You oh, know what I'm saying? That's fine. Yeah, it was a dope album, man. Uh Gonna do a thing. Did think that one hundred twenty one thousand first week. You know what I'm saying? That came out. Um, Louis Bell produced most of it, so That's super shout dope. out to him, man. Um, not a lot of new music though that came yeah. out. I'm looking forward to. I think game album coming out soon. Yeah. Um, a lot of dope records coming out. You know, so I'm looking forward to all that, man. Yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, Josh Water had the airways for the weekend. There, there you it go, is, man. There you go. Uh, Sweet like so what we, who, who we got this today, man? This is, this is um, we got B Rich, man. There it is. Dope interview, man. Yep. Uh, I relate to him a lot. He's a pharmaceutical sales rep, which I was. He went to Albany State. Yep. My second home, man, down there. So dope, dope, dope interview, man. Yep. Sold 100 million records. 100 million records sold. So yep. he's responsible for all the records sold from the B.O.B.s to the T.I.s to the yep. Kevin Gates, yep. the Boosie Badass, man. Yep. His artist, Lil Darius, is uh, making some noise. So Super dope. Let's get into this interview, man. It's pretty yeah, dope. It Free game. Free game. <laughs> Welcome back to the Free Game Producer Podcast. We got a very, very special guest in the building, a music industry veteran, music yeah. industry heavyweight, yeah, record executive, artist managers, worked in three different decades, the 2000s, 2010s, 2020s. He's worked with like B.O.B., uh, Young Dro, Kevin Gates, Boosie yeah. Badass. We got B. Rich in the Come building. Come on, man. <laughs> How you doing, sir? <laughs> Appreciate that, man. man. You make me fa- sound so, so, so like I know what the fuck I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can tell. Well, we know you do, man. Dude, I appreciate you coming to the show, man. Yeah, appreciate like, that, bro. Um, Been knowing you for a minute, bro. A long time, man. Since before I, all this shit popped off, really. Right. That's what's dope, man. Yeah. You know, I know both be riches man you know what i'm saying i know be rich before he got rich <laughs> you know what i'm saying and afterwards man it was really dope is i can speak to your character man and what what i know you did to get where you are yeah for you know sure what I'm man. Saying? thank you like, bro. Yeah. i know you was the guy that was looking out for independent artists when it wasn't cool yeah you know what i'm saying doing showcases and just making sure that there was always resources available for people you know, the artists that I know you got on, I know how they got on. It yeah, ain't like sure. this shit that's going on today <laughs> where, you know, big bro put me on type shit. Yeah. No. Nah, we grind it. Grind it, bro. Like yeah. showcase after showcase, the, running these streets. Now nah, the showcase is actually what, what taught my ear and eye. You yeah. Know, like doing that. We do it. We did it every week. We yeah. Showcase every week. That's crazy. And so imagine like 30 artists a week. 
You know, that's like what well, that's 120 artists a month. Yeah. Then what's that a year? So I got to see that like over thousands and thousands of artists a year. Yeah. And that trains you because yeah. you hear the same shit when something stands out. You're like, okay, that stands out. Yeah. So that kind of trained my eye for talent and ear for music. Yeah. So that, that taught me a lot doing them showcases. That's crazy, man. I think that's one of your strongest points is being an A&R, man. Like you've always been able to call it. Yeah, no, nah, I've been a great A&R. A lot of people don't know I, I, I did A&R with Doug and Jason Jeter on T.I.'s tra- um, Paper Trail. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've had like three joints that I placed on there. That's you know crazy. what I'm saying? So that, that's, that's a big accomplishment. I a and R'd um, all the B.O.B.'s albums up, you know, on Atlantic. Yeah. You know, found a lot of hits with, with them. Yeah. And so that was big. And, you know, just I just got a real good ear for beats and music. Yeah. So, like, when you got into the business, man, like, was your goal always to be, like, on the business side of it? Like, because you, I mean, bro, the way you, you've put deals together, the way you've managed artists, the way you've a and records, like, that's not an easy thing to do, especially in Atlanta because it's so much music shit going on like how did you position yourself to stand out and was that always the goal so now like so when i graduated college i I was a pharmaceutical sales rep so i sold drugs to doctors yeah so they tried to get them to prescribe the medicine that i had yeah and so i always finished in the top top 10 percent of my company Hmm. you know because i just was a good salesperson and then you know me being me being um a nigga in that industry yeah you know like I watched how the white people push stuff. And I'm like, I don't, I don't like that. You know, I went into the doctor and like, what's up, doc? Da, yeah. da, da, being myself, <laughs> giving them the flavor. What's up, doc? You know, you know what I'm saying? Like Let giving go. them flavor and like, and, then, and when they asked me something, I didn't know it. I didn't bullshit. I'm like, I don't know. I'll get back to you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and 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 I was more like a relationship builder. You want to go play golf, this, this, this. Because like all the drugs we were selling, they all did the same thing. Yeah. So I was like, hey. They all do the same thing. Just think about me when when you prescribe, and they they like that. That was a breath of fresh air. And that's saying, right. hey, you know the yeah, that's right <laughs> the yeah. contraindication of this and that. Yeah. Like they, they, right. they everything, you know. Yeah. So that's crazy. We had Key Henderson on the show last week. Yeah. And her first job out of college was Enterprise, and I related to that because that's my first job. But I was also a pharmaceutical sales rep as well yeah. Yeah, for years, sure. and I tried to translate some of that to the music as well. So how did um I'm just curious because I'm trying to you know do the same grind the sales aspect of it you know and then studying how you had to know the disease state. yeah so so during that time i used to watch diddy making the band yeah mm. <laughs> so same time period too. so so a lot of people don't know um bob and, and 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 he had another guy named steven and we were our cousins and so i tried to mold them like diddy like i was like yeah get up do this do that <laughs> and then by me doing the open mics i had a lot of friends in the industry yeah that that that, that could let us record and teach them how to record one, yeah. one of them was playboy trey like yeah, he was very straight. instrumental in uh in Bob's career. Yes, my boy. You know, helping yeah. them learn how to record our Pro Tools and stuff yeah. like that. Then I put it um put it in my basement, the the the, the gear, and then we start doing it that way. Yeah, but yeah, just just watching TV and and, and I was self taught. You know, no one really helped me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's fine. It was just like the research, the research you would have to do and the For study sure. you have to do. I try to apply that to music as well. That's why I'm such a big researcher now. I like yeah. to study because you have to study to know what you was talking about in front nah, of these doctors. I took my sales background and put it in the music. Yeah. Like for instance, like how 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 we got Bob to pop when well, the blogs was. I just I, I didn't I didn't understand the blogs at the time. And so what I did was, um, I googled Lupe Fiasco because hmm. I thought Bob was kind of similar. Yeah. And so then all the all the sites that came up. I would click the site and there's an email down at the bottom or contact. That's right. Like, hey, if you like B.O.B., I mean, if you like Lupe, you'll like B.O.B. And I just kept sending it. And like at the time, I wasn't working anymore. So I would do that for eight hours a day. So working in my space, Come doing on. that, trying to do that. And eventually, they start posting them on the blogs. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, then so, I start learning like, okay, if I post it on this blog, then everybody pick it up. You know, right. So it was like the two dope boys. That's right. It go crazy. The right. not right and you know, rap radar. So if you get them on there, then everybody else copies them. Yeah. So I had figured out the feeder sites and I made it easier instead of hitting everybody up. That's but right. But it's totally different. Now you can't do that these it's days. Say, yeah. It's meant to say eight hours a day. Yeah. Eight hours a Y'all day. Y'all at home listening. No, he's dead serious, <laughs> man. Like I used to, I knew that what was up, man, because not only was you working him here, but you also made sure like, Major producers knew who he was. Yeah, for sure. Like you worked him. It was dope because he was, uh, you know, also a, a dope writer. He just made sure he was always in the right positions for all the right plays. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So and, and, and it's the drive. Like yeah. you know, I lost everything. Lost my house, my home. Like lo- lost it. Yeah, got foreclosed on. Had to get out because of music. But I just always had to believe we was gonna make it. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, That's sure. good to know, man. Mm-hmm. 
That's dope. Yeah, I relate this. Whole, so where whole where life. you from, man? Like what's I'm, your what's your origin story? I'm from Southwest Atlanta, the yeah. Swats over there off on Camelton Road, Mount Gilead, yeah. up street from Thero. But I went to North Fulton, yeah, North Atlanta. Yeah, so I was bused from um, Thero High School every morning to North Atlanta. I guess it was like you know trying to get more um, diverse in the yeah. school because it was a white area, but. You know, I went there. Yeah. Um, graduated from there. Went to uh, college at um, Albany State University. So that's oh that's down in Albany, Georgia. That's my so, second home, Albany. Yeah. Albany. So <laughs> went down. That's my that's my brother from another mother right yeah, here. So, it is, man. so went to Albany down there. Kind of um, established my roots there. Um, you know, going to all black college was was great experience for me. Yeah. And then graduated from there. Came back to Atlanta and I um I worked at Walmart <laughs> as, yeah. a, as a as a store manager. That's dope. And that shit was like the hardest thing ever in the world. So that kind of like prepared me for the music because it's nothing harder than being a manager at Walmart yeah. having to work can imagine 7 to 7 80 hours a week that shit was terrible yeah but it, but I stuck it out though it isn't hold on one second let me fix it. you recall I was saying like I was a pharmaceutical sales rep and yeah. I do a lot of stuff with the doctor so right. one of the perks of being a rep um, I got a chance to get Falcon tickets hmm. so I got like four seats four season tickets when Vic was playing and um it was a radio show called Two Live Stools. Yep. And um I got I got cool with them. Um and we did a tailgate. I had brought the DJ and it was popping. The tailgate was like one of the most popping tailgates that I've been a part of. And so this dude came by and he was like, his name was Alfonso Mays, and he's like, Hey, I got this club down at Underground Atlanta called Blues in the Alley. And he was like, Can you help me promote it? And I'm like, I'm like, why? He said, You got all these people here at the at the tailgate, just tell people about the open mic, whatever. So I was like, Shall I try? Yeah. And so I just called everybody. And the first night, man, like the, the capacity of the club was like 250 people. But man, my networking back then, I just was hitting everybody, all my friends, all my college buddies, this, yeah. this. And we had like 350 people out there. Yeah. And like for some reason, he got the artist to come, however he did. But then what we did was we started saving all the emails and numbers of everybody. Yeah. And so then I got so far with it. I was like, man, I get tired of emails and this or that. I had this thing called call them all. So I put all the phone numbers in. Wow. And then it would call them and I'd be like, hey, tonight it's going down at the <laughs> Blues oh, yeah. in the Alley. Da, da. So, <laughs> so people would hear it. You know what I'm saying? And so they would come because you have to be reminded. Sometimes you forget, but then I'm here, you know, the, the marketing strategy that I used to do for that shit was so crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So that's fine. You know, shit like that. Yeah, that's super crazy. So how did you end up, you know, getting the actual artist? Was BLB so, a first so, artist? So, so, so yeah, so I used to work with this dude, one of my high school buddies named Jack Boner. He had signed a DJ Toomp, and I used to go around and sit in Toomp studio for hours, and just like watch him make beats. And I was like, I was like, Toomp, hey, hey, can I be a producer? Can you teach me how to be a producer? And he like, he looked at me, he's like, look, bro, you just can't automatically be no producer. Right. That just don't come out. He's like, fine, what you good at? Yeah, and, and and do it. And I'm like, well, shit, I'm good at marketing and business. So then I then then I try to um. Manage Jack Boner, but everybody was looking at me like, "You not no manager? How you just gonna come in and do this?" So I had to fight a lot of shit because I was new. Yeah, but you know, working with him, you know, um, fighting through the through the negativity of people looking at me is like, "You don't do this." So yeah. that that taught me early, you yeah. know, have thick skin. And then um, um, Bob and my and my other cousin Steven, they um they used to come to the open mic. I, well, now nah, well one day, you know, he was doing bad in school. They came to me and was like, "Hey." You know, can you help him out? And I say, look, man, if you start doing better in school, yeah, you know, getting your grades up, you know, I help you with music, yeah. And so he had to like ride along with me. They had like ride along with a professional day, so he got a chance to ride with me and um, watch me work. And then that's how that's how I start working with him. That's and crazy, so, bro. Yeah. So then once he did good, I started letting him do the open mic, and that yeah. was his first time. So the first time he ever performed, man, he was just looking down at the stage, not paying attention. He was terrible. Yeah. And so, you know, that's when the the the, the Diddy from making the band came right. in. That's now when you I guys started working. Yeah. yeah. Artist development. Yeah, for that, sure. That aspect of it. Man, so like when it came to like moving into the boardrooms, man, because like, you know, you from Southwest Atlanta, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? You broke in with an artist that you really put the grind in, in the streets. Then it translates to success. You know what I'm saying? That mm -hmm. there's a point where you guys end up sitting in boardrooms getting things done. Like, what was that just transition like for you? Was it uh, was it challenging, or was you really just prepared for that? Couldn't wait for that day. Now, nah, like I, I couldn't wait. I, yeah. I'm, you know, like by me dealing with doctors and just just everyone, just in general, like from being in Albany State, dealing mm -hmm. with them, playing football, just all through all of being a manager at Walmart, just dealing with all shit. That was nothing. Yeah. Like the whole thing with the, with 
with, with the music industry, it's like it's like high school again. That's what I had a problem with. Mm-hmm. It's fitting in, mm-hmm. like, cause I'm I'm more professional and and that it came off like people don't trust me. Like, what's up with him? He's a fast talker. This this this. So I had to deal with that in the music industry. Yeah. But the way I was able to win is like I don't I don't meet deadlines. I beat them because everybody in this industry they hurry up and wait, mm-hmm. and I'm not trying to wait. That's right. So I just keep moving. Everybody too cool to yeah. call somebody or just keep calling. The, the, the key to success is following up. Yeah. A lot of people don't want to follow up. Yeah. I follow up like a motherfucker. Yeah. And I, I admire that about you, man. I mean, that was something I've always known about you. Like, you know, the word was, man, that you were just no nonsense. It was like, we going to do this or we ain't. Like, it's like, and if you decide to do it, you would you would make it happen. You nah, know what I mean? Nah, I'm a strong believer of the law of attraction. And like, back then, like, you know, I was watching a lot of Dame Dash, which which hurt me in a, in a sense, because like, I, I like him. Yeah. And so, you know, I didn't hold my tongue. Mm-hmm. And so that kind of like pissed a lot of people up coming yeah. off. And then I, I had to learn that. Yeah, you got to be tactful. Yeah. But like you said, like, we're going to do this. This is what we're going to do. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Everybody watch this. And then that kind of like strange relationship with you and your artists and your team when you you forever just amp, amp, amp. So I had right. to learn how to tone it down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I'm still just who I am. That's why I'm successful. That's why the people I work with are successful yeah, because of that is. drive. But you still have to learn to be tactful to kind of teach people how you are or whatever. So like when I work with people, I kind of tell them straight up, hey, this is how I am. Have thick skin. Don't, you know, so you'll know. Yeah. But still it, it becomes an issue. Yeah. But I'm still working on that as a man. Yeah. So uh, you've been in the game long enough to ask this question, man. Like, so what is, like, how do you feel about the way the record industry is now and the way music is and how it's being presented, yada, yada? I mean, everything changes every couple of years. I mean, I love what I do, so I love it. You know what I'm saying? Um, you just have to adapt and understand that. Once you understand that, hey, it's not going to be like it was, like, mm-hmm. and you keep learning and, 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 and teaching yourself, you're going to be okay. Yeah. But you just have to adapt and be learnable. Yeah. You got to keep young people around you because that's what music is. You got to listen to them. Yeah. You know, sometimes I might not understand a song, but I understand a movement and I understand comments and I understand engagement. Yeah. So when I see that and I'm and I might not understand the song, yeah. I still see it's there. And I, then that's when my marketing kicks in because you can't take that away from me. That's right. I know how to market. That's right. I know how to make something pop. Yeah. Now I may not understand a song, but I understand the movement behind it and the engagement behind it. Once I see that, it's on and popping. Can you talk about marketing? Like a lot of people don't really understand what that means in music. Like let's say you know a young artist is in the game and they they got something hot. They they got what it, they got what we would consider as fire enough to go to market with. How do you explain marketing to a person? What should they be trying to do with themselves? Okay, marketing is basically like a form of advertising, mm-hmm. right? Like McDonald's, y'all know it's a McDonald's on every block, right? Yes, sir. Facts. Like if you go down, you are gonna see it. So it's safe to say they don't really have to market, right? Yeah. But they the biggest advertisers in the world. Yeah. You see a McDonald's commercial every day. That's right. So by me saying that is. Advertise your music, you know what I'm saying? Um, whether it's getting an influencer, whether it's, it's getting on Facebook ads, Instagram ads, YouTube ads, whether it's you posting something, it's content. So basically marketing to me is content, putting that content out for people to see and by all means figuring out how to spread it. Mm-hmm. My, my goal is that one person see it. If you get one person a day, that's a, if they like it, that means two people are going to know because they're going to tell something about it. Tell so about just, it. just yeah. if you work like that, you get your, you get your household Get your neighbors, get your block, get the next street. If you just take that, that 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 mindset, you gonna win. Yeah. But if you try to try to try to take the whole world on start, it's gonna it's gonna overwhelm you, and you're gonna give up. Yeah. So, uh, with music right now, are you more still interested in like the true artistry of an artist, or are you more interested in the like the way they package themselves, the way they are on okay. social media. Cause you know, it's a big, okay, it's a, I, 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 got, I, got, I got where you're going. Yeah. So listen, so when I had no genre, mm-hmm. right. I was like into the artistry. Yeah. Like I'm a sign him. I don't care about what you got. Yeah. But like that, that almost made me broke. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because like, just cause I like something, it takes a lot of time to develop it. Mm-hmm. But now I changed my mindset. I still like good music. Yeah. That's what I like. And I try to, I try to um, fuck with where it has good music, whatever. But, I'm more into far as business wise, if it has a movement. Mm-hmm. If it has a movement and there's something going on, then it's easier for me to plug it in and to and to make money off of it. That's right. So it's the business for me now. Yeah. Before it was a passion. I still love it. And it's a passion. The artist I have now, he's he's like, I love his music. I love I love I love his movement. I love everything about him. So I'm I'm in love with music again because of him. Yeah. Lil Darius. Yeah, Lil Darius. Um but before that, you know, I kinda went through a depression on music. I had two artists that got killed, Dobie and mm-hmm. um, Peanut the Don. So that kinda you know, threw me down. Then um, 
the um the maturation of the bob you know kind of you know start trickling down it kind of was depressing and now it's like i'm back at it yeah. so but but i'm smarter and learn from it yeah i do i do want to find artists that 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 music that i like mm-hmm. but they have to put the work ethic in as yeah. well i'm not going to mess with the artist that i like if they don't have the work ethic. yeah i think that them. i think that that's all it is i think the the what you have to consider when picking an artist now is just a lot more like it used to be that could just be really dope and then it'd be about what we put into it to grow it but now it's like you almost seem like a lazy artist if you really dope at what you do but don't have fans you don't have any engagement like you some people just refusing to get involved with some of those you know like social media and you know they they just trying yeah, to make a big, sure. yeah and it's like that doesn't make sense it's like like you said, you gotta adapt. If you if you wanna be in the music business, then you have to, you know, you have to adapt to what's going on in the in the game. But some kids some kids just don't get that, man. Yeah, like for sure. Yeah. That leads me leads me to, to a question I had. You're involved with a lot of open mics. Yeah, do talk- an open mic called Exposure Open Mic, me and my boy KD, Fort Knox. K D, my guy, yeah, we, we, Fort we, Knox, we, my guy. Fort, Fort yeah, Knox, yeah. make sure you know about that every week. <laughs> and so and so we, we, we've been doing with heavy, heavy. <laughs> we've been doing that for um Almost ten years now. Yes, and so KD kind of like makes sure everything good. We, uh, if you ever want to hit him up, is we working? His email is we working dot com. I, I, look, if yeah. you go to Exposure Open Mic, you know, if yeah, you we'll, put phone, it there, the, yeah uh, put it in there. We'll put it in the notes. Yeah, yeah. but now it's like so that that's just that's just been a part. It's a staple. So, but for up and coming artists, what role does open mics play with them getting the buzz up? Because a lot of times I, I've had multiple artists, more than one occasion, where they had a little thing going, a little bit going, and they felt like they were like. Above uh, the mic. Yeah. yeah, so can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, so look, man, like open mic, all artists, like, look at me. This, this, you should you should look at an open mic as practicing your craft. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Like, and I'm telling you why. Like, performing in front of other artists is the hardest thing to do. Mm-hmm. They just staring at you. They just They're like, man, you need to hurry up. I'm ready to perform. Yeah. And yeah. so that is so hard to perform in front of. I mean, we, we've all, you know, you've seen that. Yeah. And so if you can some way make a song and get them to move or you your energy can get them to move, you own to something. Yeah. You own to something. So so pay attention to that. But I think open mics are important for that reason only. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And networking. Like it's a lot of other artists in there. You know, watch the person that's really buzzing and, and doing their thing. Collab with them. And then it's it's, it's, it's producers there. Yeah. There's people that know how to make videos there. So that's the that's the point I like about it. It's just you're not at home, you're interacting, you're moving. Now at home and in and, and, and YouTube and all that stuff is great. Instagram is great. But I think you need to get out as well. Man, I can't lie, bro. I miss Atlanta when it used to be big on the on the open mics, yeah. man. Like there was such a movement of kids, bro, that almost everybody broke too that was nah, going to Willie, it. Willie man. Joe, yep. Rock City, yep. B O B. A lot of us um, got deals from the Ray. Me, me and Ray, Ray Daniels, we, we was in straight competition trying to crush each other. That's next. right, man. And now, like, look at them. Yeah, Ray Daniels, one of the big execs. That's right. You know, so like, it's fun like watching where where the humble beginnings have started and where dope. we are now. Yeah, man. And me and him, you know, we get along great. Yeah, he's helped me, and I've helped him. Yeah, that's dope. I need y'all to help me. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure. Like, Let's go. Got you, bro. Yeah, nah, that's really got you, bro. So what are some of the key uh, ingredients to like uh, an artist manager these days that's trying to get an artist to to go through the steps? It's, it's kind of like a partnership, right, with an artist and, and, and an executive. But sometimes it seems to the balance. You know, you know what I'm noticing, man, like even with me and Lil Darius and, and my, I got a partner with Lil Darius named Martell. So me and him partnered up and we, we kind of blowing Darius up. Shout out Martell. So, um, um, man, what I'm learning is you can't assume somebody know what you know. Hmm. Like I be thinking Darius knows what I know, mm-hmm. but you gotta communicate because it's like you may we finna do this, do that. He may not even get what you're talking about. No I think you got um whack. Yeah, like, this shit whack because kids, whatever they gonna look at you. You old, you gotta old. Right. Yeah, this this. So it's like it ain't about the music, son. It's about marketing. What we trying to do? You you got the music aspect because you're making it. Yeah. So I, I get that. So it's like it's trying to trying to get him to understand. Hey, you need to post on reels. Yeah. Hey, you need to do the TikTok. Yeah. Hey, and they they may not think they're too cool for it. So yeah. that's the main thing is getting art, artist psychology. Yeah. And learning mm-hmm. how to deliver what you're mm-hmm. saying. Yep. You know psychology. what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. That's that's the main thing because like they looking at us like we some old niggas and don't know what the fuck we talking about. Right. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I'm clear. And man. so like <laughs> to to get them to understand that you do know what you're talking about. You have had success in this, and even though we did it this way years ago. It, they, that don't matter to them mm-hmm. So it's like You have to show them How it benefits them mm-hmm. And whatever So that's the main thing Is communicating yeah. What you know So when you have a plan 
you probably got to walk it, walk them through it. Mm-hmm. This is why we're doing this. And then they get it. Yeah. And that's what I'm learning. So yeah. once you start talking and walking through shit and kind of explaining, that, that's what I learned now with, with today's, yeah. you know, because like they already know they shit. Yeah. Everything's on their on their Instagram, they all the insights, up. all that. Right. Well, yeah. I know if I post it this time, this that, you know. Yep. Insights tell it all. Nah, that's dope, man. So management is actually that at this point. Like it's like you have to really psychology like psychology thing is crazy. Expectations, man, it's psychology, yeah. the whole yeah. nine. It's crazy, bro. When I was in uh, pharmaceutical sales, we had a sales training that taught something and I heard uh Anthony, I think it's Anthony Salah, he's a uh, Nas is I think a futures manager. He mentioned the same thing on the podcast. I was like, "Why? Wow, I ain't heard that in years about the psychology of it. And he would go to doctors and say, look, I need you to do three or four things. He really only wanted want him to do one thing, but he mentioned a bunch of stuff to do. And they're going to yeah. say, they can't say no too many times. Yeah. So I heard that about artists, talking to artists, getting yeah, them kind of yes. like do yes. only certain things. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So Fine I don't know. That was all good. <laughs> so is that psychology? You know, asking the artist to do X, Y, Z, really you only want them to do one particular thing. But man, you, I, I think like all of that shit is art of psychology, man. Like what you're saying, it's a yeah. truth in all of that. It's like you really have to be tactful how you present it. Yeah. And then when it's time to be firm, be firm. But like a lot of these kids are sensitive, so you got to watch how you deliver shit because they just might quit on you. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So just like, man. you know, you, like a lot of the artists, you need to be thick skinned and have people in your corner that's not going to tell you everything you want to hear because you got to think they're reading everything and they're how great they are. Yeah. And so as an artist, you got to understand. You need to have around. You need to have people around you to 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 tell you not how great yeah. you're not. Yeah, ground and, you. Yeah, yep. and to tell you what's the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. Especially people that's had experience and had success. I've been to the Grammys. Yeah, performed at the Grammys. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I understand. That's yeah. the biggest pinnacle. That's of so all. crazy, bro. Yeah, I might have, might have read in your bio somewhere. I read it. you're responsible for over 100 million records. Yeah, like with with, with everything worldwide that, that Bob's done, Kevin Gates, Ti, all that man. That's a lot of stuff that that I've been a part of that has mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of sales in it. That's yeah. crazy. So yeah, free right. game. So what he's saying, you ought to be listening to it at home. Yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, like, don't get, don't get me wrong. Yeah, like, like, don't nobody had an answer to this. Because yeah. if they did, they'd be a billions and billions of dollars. Yeah, it's all about guesstimates. Yeah, it's all about experience, making mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes. Yeah, I signed a lot of artists that I didn't do shit for, and they tell you they probably hate my guts. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, so it's, it's all about learning, 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 and figuring it out. But I've also had a lot of success as well. Yeah. Nah, that's crazy, man. I just remember the whole, you know, the era when 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 B.O.B. popped and like just watching him develop in front of everybody nah, was pretty was great, incredible. Man. That was great. Like he was a good sponge. He did his thing. Like that was that was incredible to yeah. watch. And it was incredible to like birth it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To watch that. It's like, whoa. Yeah. You know, like one time I just sat back and um we was at the Apache. And I just I was I was I used to be a DJ as well. I used mm-hmm. to be DJ security, all that shit. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just started crying, man, at the Apache. I think, matter of fact, I think that's when uh, Yellow Wolf had opened up. Probably was, And then yeah. we did. We had them singers. Yeah, yeah. It was that that night, <laughs> I was just kind of like, cause I, I saw I saw it coming. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah, for sure. Man, I was really, uh, you know, I think I, I went to the last show that y'all did in Atlanta at like Smiths. Smith's old bar. When the first song blew up, and it was just like I just remember being in there, like you could feel the energy. Yeah, man, man it's like, gone. Bro. I, believe it or not, man, you you could witness this like before before all the big pop hits. Like he had a real big underground buzz, oh, like man. Kendrick. Like, Come on, it was like Kendrick. Like yes, that. Sir. I was like everybody was, but then he just when the pop hits came, yep. he lost all that cool crowd and yep. stuff. But like, yeah, now nah, at one time it was like it was it was crazy. So what does this mean for you as an executive now, man? Because, like, you know, you definitely got all the, you know, you got all the skin in the game, man. So, like, are you going to, like, I know you probably got your own company and things like that, but mm-hmm. what what is this for you as a as an executive? What's next? Right now, what's next is, is my company with Martel, IGM, and um, Lil Darius. And, like, we about to take him to the next level. Like, yeah. he about to be big. Like super big, super dope. He's gonna be the biggest artist I ever had. That's Mark dope. my words. Come on, yeah, I'm serious. I ain't just talking. Yeah, he's real dope too. Yeah, and I and, and I'm motivated. I'm back motivated to like where I was in 2007. Yeah, he needs some willpower beats too. Come on, man. Be I'm getting sure. on there. I'm sure. coming in there. Uh, that, that's fire, bro. Like, so you just gonna build it independently and take it there, or, or um, just our label is independent. Yeah. Um, we just did a major deal with um. With Darius, mm-hmm. um, but I'm gonna keep that under wraps. Darius so is gonna keep going, but yeah, but he just expect them to be real big. That's super dope. We are gonna grind it out. Ain't gonna be no instant shit. So yeah, we're gonna grind it out. 
But but just mark my words, y'all gonna remember this. So Darius, is he from? He's from, from Atlanta, Athens, Athens, Georgia. Athens, Georgia, man. The, the home of the dog. So Athens, man. Like I don't think. I mean, I know Athens has some people that's from there. Yeah. But they don't claim it. He claiming Athens. Yeah. And that's so fine. I think he gonna be the biggest artist to ever come out of Athens that's claiming Athens rapper. Yeah. Dope. yeah. Super. Dope. Check him out. Yeah. Speaking of grinding though, uh, what's the importance of a manager or an executive having multiple? grinds going you mentioned like restaurant down the street like what is your attitude in terms of having uh multiple sources of income being in music man i'm gonna tell you this it's, it's good to have multiple multiple um resources to bring income in mm -hmm. i tell you i think i made a mistake okay was when um when bob was like he had established his name and and we was doing good I feel like i started focusing on other artists mm -hmm. and focusing on that when really i should have been focused on him to even make him even bigger bigger yeah. Like after talking to Jay Brown, who's Rihanna's manager, you know, he he said that he told me he's like, focus on this till it's just too big. Yeah, you know, and then worry about other stuff. I was trying to help my friends out, mm -hmm. you know, sign other artists, yep. do this, and that took away from Bob. Yeah, and I think that if I would have been more on on it, yeah, I think he'd be be bigger than what he is now. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, that's free game. That's free. But yeah, man. Well, it's so like. You just told me about this restaurant you own, man. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, come on. so, um, <laughs> so down the street, Main Street, uh, it, was, it was called Atlanta Barbecue Company. Yeah. So I did that for like almost a year, and um, we we, we weren't able to um, to sustain. So Hank, who has Tom Dick and Hanks off Ralph David Abernathy, yeah. I um, I teamed up with him, and and um, we we did that. We did Tom Dick and Hanks, and that that went very very well. Yeah. So. You know, he had a brand. He helped me out. He bailed me out. He took over and he's running it. And I'm proud of what he's doing. So, That's dope. so, so it's good to say that, hey, I'm part of that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Well, look, man, I'm glad you came and kicked it with us, dog. Like, sure. I, I am a huge fan of who you are and what you've done, man. You know, I'm one of the few people who got to sit and watch the whole thing. You know, a lot of people see you or know about the things that you've done, but they can't say that, you know, they saw it. Oh no, you you, know, you definitely saw it. I man. saw it, bro. And it's kind of crazy. It reminds me, man. I just remember the old the old Mercedes you used to drive around, hey, man. man. Had the bumper falling off. Come everything. on. Hey, yeah, man. Nah. But I ain't have a man, it was time. That's why I'm loyal to some people. I ain't have a dollar to my name on some of them days. You know, my boy Doug, who T I manager, you know, responsible for the trap museum, he kept going. Like, hey man, get up. Come on, let's yeah. work. You That's know. why I feel <laughs> I remember being at Patrick not having no money. He gave me a hundred dollars. But you know what's crazy, man? Knowing you all this time, bro, you have never been different. Like, it's never been, that. you ain't never changed. Like, it was like, hey, man, bro, he's still the same dude that was oh, for sure. out here hustling in. And every <laughs> time I see you, you ain't never funny acting, none of that shit. Yeah. It's always yeah. 100, man. So I think that's why the success is there, man. Outside of the fact that, like, you just really grinded for it, man. Good people all the way. Make it all the way. You know what I'm saying? Nah, I appreciate so, that, bro. Yeah. We're going to continue to make it. And I see what you're doing. I like what you're doing. I like the platform you're doing. Yes, sir. And like, I'm going to get you in with um, with, with my artist. Yes, sir. Right there, and I'm glad to make the reconnection with you. Yeah, that's Straight dope, up. man. Well, tell everybody where we can find you on social media. Man, um, Instagram, B Rich 404. That's B R I C H 404. Yep. Hit me on there, man. And like, you know, if you see me out, I, I know I kind of look look standoffish, but just come up and talk to me. You know, I talk to you. Yeah. Now, if I'm in the process of just really moving, you know, just just knowing that right moment is to holler at me because you know I may, I may end up like I'm jumping you off. It's not that I'm just in work mode. Yeah, there it is. And what's the uh the open mic uh, uh exposure open mic? Yeah, that, you know, that's the Instagram On exposure. Instagram. Yeah, there it is, man. We appreciate you, bro. I right, appreciate right. you, man. Thank My you, my man. Free game podcast. Right. Yeah. Yeah.